Alrighty, welcome back. Let's get started. Um, item number 14. Peter? Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, before you is the vision statement that was um, reviewed and adopted by the Planning Commission as far as the vision of the general plan. Uh, this was previously scheduled back in September. Uh, all of our minds were focused elsewhere, so this was continued off calendar and finally back on our agenda. The Planning Commission has continued to work on the general plan during this time period. We're currently reviewing the resource production element um, on next Thursday. Hopefully we'll have that wrapped up um, and moving on to the remaining elements that we have to review. But it's important that the overall vision that the county wants to, you know, the, move, the direction in which we want to move is uh, clarified uh, so that if for some reason the board has a different direction than the Planning Commission, uh, that they know that you know, which direction to go uh, forward with this. So the, um, the vision statement was provided to you at a joint uh, Planning Commission board workshop back in June. Uh, it was decided that yes, we wanted to include a vision statement in the general plan. Uh, the Planning Commission took <coughs> the draft version that had been prepared several years ago uh, through a series of uh, public workshops and worked on through the consultant uh, in place at that time. And uh, that document was released, um, I don't remember the exact date, but several years ago, uh, with the understanding that it would be further reviewed and we're finally at that point now. So in your packet is the draft of the document that the Planning Commission uh, adopted after uh, several, uh, several hearings. Uh, and the recommendation to you is um, that you review that draft, uh, make any changes that you feel are appropriate, uh, and then we can move forward from there. Do you have any questions of me? No, I don't. Thank you very much. Any Looks like there was the lots board? of discussion. There was lots of discussion. <laughs> <laughs> and in the, own, in the end, it sounds like what we have today that the Planning Commission were 5-0 votes on each section of it. Is that pretty much what um, I get out of it? I think for the most part that is true. I don't remember if every section, I know that there was a lot of discussion uh, in your packet are the minutes um, mm -hmm. and without going back and looking at each one if that's what your recollection of the minutes yeah. say then that's what it was okay but I know there was quite a bit of discussion regarding uh, both from the public as well as between members of the Commission as to you know, we essentially spent you know two whole days wordsmithing yeah uh, that document okay thank I you I have a question for you Peter. yes um, uh, the current vision statement that's in front of us now um, it just seems like it's the vision statement. It's very short and sweet. And then it kind of goes on into a lengthy thing about guiding principles. Yes. Um, which is different than the vision statement. That's true. I've been using the term vision statement as sort of a catch-all for the entire document, including the guiding principles. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I like the vision statement you have here. I'd be supportive of that. I think the guiding principles, um, I would just, I would, I would just get rid of them and just adopt the, the vision statement as a vision statement. I think otherwise it's just too lengthy um, and it gets, uh, I don't know, it just seems like a lot of words that uh, don't need to be there. Do you say that from past experience, Chris, with general plans or? Well, I, I mean, if I have a vision statement, I read this vision statement here. Uh -huh. just, the historical character of the county's communities, the value of its productive resources, distinction of its physical beauty and growing economic opportunities will create a high quality of life for residents and a remarkable and memorable experience for visitors to the county. <coughs> Sounds great. And then let's just forget about the rest of the stuff here because I think that's more of just like a, uh, for maybe the rest of the general plan to discuss but not for the vision statement. So that's what I would recommend is just, and maybe we could add some of the, I know people like adding stuff about the property rights which is something I'm also, uh, you know, absolutely in favor of. I think everybody in our county is in favor of property rights. You know, we could add a little line about property rights in that vision statement there and then just forget about the rest of it. So then we have a very simple 
very easy vision statement rather than this lengthy two-page thing, or, you know, it's not two pages, I guess, page in there. So that's my, that's my thought. Well, is this board comment time? Sure. I, I respectfully disagree with you, Supervisor Wright. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, I think the guiding principles give us uh, specific direction, but still incorporates latitude to change with the uh, changing uh, situations. Um, it gives us a guide, not a set definite rule, but a guide to keep in mind while we're accomplishing what this general plan is supposed to do. The vision statement, I agree with Supervisor Wright, is excellent. I think it's a good deal. But once again, the guiding principle, I think, needs to be in there because that gives us a more specific guide in which direction we're going. And it breaks it down uniquely into the areas that are of major concern. Okay. Any other board comments? <clears throat> no, I, I don't have any... Uh thoughts about making any great changes to it. I, I know the Planning Commission put uh, a Herculean effort into doing this, and so I assume so did the Planning Department, uh, since you sort of uh, enjoying your work. Uh, I've, I must have read through this five times. I don't really have uh, a lot of changes. It, it is a general plan statement, and uh, it's not a, a specific plan statement, and I think that's what it should be. Uh, albeit the name general plan. Um, there, I, I don't believe that there's anything that uh, could have been precluded that this doesn't say or doesn't give opportunity to do going forward. Uh, I don't have any changes to submit to it other than a thank you to the Planning Commission for what they did with it. Okay. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, I can see where Chris is coming from in a very short, precise vision statement. Um, but I, I, I really could go either way because I think it's all, I think the guiding principles just reinforce the vision statement. Um, and, uh, you know, there was a tremendous amount of work that went into this. There was a lot of vetting at the Planning Commission level. And uh, I don't, I wouldn't change anything on here. Um, uh, it was just for me, it's like, you know, is the vision statement going to be the one paragraph minus the guiding principles, or, or do we approve it as the vision statement with the guiding principles? So, The intent was that um, the complete package be adopted. And if I confuse things by just referring to the vision statement, I meant both the vision statement and the guiding principles. Okay. okay. And I think as um, one of the commissioners pointed out, is, you know, as we review the, uh, the goals and policies, we refer back to these guiding principles. Uh, so in that regard, they, they provide, they, they serve a purpose. They're not necessary. There's nothing in state law that mandates we have them. Uh, they're a helpful tool to have as we create the general plan. Uh, and that's the reason why they're there. Well, one of the things to add to my comments too, that uh, when I read through this, and it, 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 it does, it, uh, it, it, it reinforced that it's a general plan. Like it or not, this is probably a 20-year document because that's what it seemed like the other one became. Uh, so there could be a lot of changes in two decades that this has to apply to. And I think if we get too specific, uh, what the county looks like in 10 years might not be anything that, that uh, crosses through my mind right now. Uh, and this allows for those changes and allows for property rights to be respected but it also allows for the developing uh, that I can see uh, of our communities. Uh, so I, I kind of refer back to what I said. I, I, don't, I don't have anything I want to change on here. Right. <clears throat> Any public comments? Um, Al Sagama, Taxpayer Association. We recommend that you approve this. Is uh, in our in our viewpoint, this is perhaps the most freedom friendly, property rights friendly, and intelligent general plan statement we've seen in many many years. 
and the people that work so hard on it, particularly the, in the Planning Commission, I want to be complimented for their work, and it's certainly worthwhile because our children and their children could actually work in Calaveras County. They won't have to flee because of a, a quagmire of overregulation. This is a good, a very good document. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Lou Mayhew. Um, I, I prefer the original draft uh, vision and guiding principles over this. I think it better reflects the, uh, the values and, if, if you will, the, a more soaring vision of a kind of a, a shining county in the hills. Um, that takes all of the, 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 ver the version in front of you today takes that away uh, to a considerable extent. Um, and, and I think that's unfortunate. unfortunate. The Planning Commission does seem on, on a mission to emphasize private property rights. Uh, one of the difficulties with that is that um, I think a lot of people consider their property rights to rest in the land use designations and zoning of their property which tells them uh, what they can expect to happen next to them. And, and it, in other words, it provides their right to be free from incompatible development unless that proposed development goes through a process to show that, well, it's really not incompatible or the incompatibilities can be mitigated. So, um, I think that is a crucial property right that is either ambiguous or not addressed by these principles. I think these principles tend to convey a property right sense that you have a lot of freedom to do what you want on your property, uh, free from regulation to the maximum, maximum extent possible. And I, I think uh, the outcome of that too often is a kind of constant strife over land use uh, incompatibilities. Uh, and ultimately, when that kind of thing continues, it leads to a, a kind of dysfunctional county infrastructure. Uh, and ultimately, I think that works against people who would want to invest in the county or move there. Thirty seconds. Yeah. What? Did you? What? Oh, no, I, 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 I'm sorry. A anyway, I want to, I want to suggest one, one thing. Let's, let's talk about property rights. Uh, if you could amend, or add a bullet to, or, or change the guiding principle property rights to say, county government will respect and protect the property rights of people to develop their productive resources <coughs> as well as being protected, as well as be protected from incompatible development by land use designations and zoning. And I think that embraces both senses of what property rights is about and should be. Thank you. Uh, Colleen Platt, MyValleySprings.com. Um, we've sat through this process, and it was a very long process. Um, I'm not sure if you ever got in your packet. It was left out of the packet, but I believe it was e emailed to you that the uh, Calaveras Planning Coalition, which we're also members of, had um, come up with a modified version of this from the 2008 version, and then they came up with a modified version. And, so that was also considered during, during the planning commission meetings. Um, a lot of people did support the modified, edited version of the 2008 principles. That there was a lot. I don't know if you had a chance to look through the packet, but there was many, many, many public comments sent in in support of that. So, uh, <laughs> if I had my druthers, that's the version I would like. But what we have in front of us. Um, there's a couple of things, if you do decide to go with this version, there's a couple of suggestions I'd like to make as far as things that I feel 
um, you know, could be improved a little bit or might have been left out. Um, under the property rights section, a bullet point that the coalition had originally suggested addresses the fact that under property rights, the public interest, and as Mr. Mayhew mentioned, incompatibility issues like that are not really addressed here. They're putting property rights at the top without any balance to anything else. And we had a bullet in there that we felt, you know, acknowledged the importance of property rights, but added that balance in there. And the way that reads is um, the fundamental, this would be a third bullet, not um, to change anything there. The fundamental importance of property rights will be balanced <clears throat> with the public interest through goals and policies that are economically and environmentally sound and fiscally responsible. So I think that's just something that got left out of there that we need to get back in there as a balance with the public interest of public health, safety, and welfare, the environment. So property rights shouldn't trump everything on top of everything. I mean, there should be some balance in there for the interests of the public. So that, that was a bullet point that they've got tons of public support for, and I don't see th that there would be a problem or a conflict there. And then the last, um, <clears throat> the last subject um, in your vision and guiding principles, safety and natural resources, the last bullet there. I think also we've left out um, the county's involvement here. This is a county, this is a county general plan, and the county is left out of that bullet point. It's all put on, on to people who own, operate, and manage the land. And I don't think that's like exactly proper for being in a general plan. We could just leave that section out and just say, and actually the original bullet point said, protect and maintain open space, wildlife habitat, agricultural land, and forest, period. And you do that as is, is set forth in the general plan. Um, if you don't, if you leave the county out, there's no county involvement at all. There's no role for the county to play here. So you're putting that all on who owns, operates, and manages the land. I think that should come out of there. It's, it kind of creates a conflict. So just my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. Holly Mines <clears throat> from Real Flat and also a member of the Calaveras Planning Coalition. Um, it's been mentioned by all of you and by um, at least Mr. Sagala um, that the Planning Commission has put a great deal of um, effort into the rewriting of this vision and guiding principles. And it's true, they spent many, many hours and many of us sat through many of those hours um, <clears throat> listening to the rewriting of it. Uh, so yes, we can give them credit for taking a lot of time to rewrite it. However, in my view, their rewriting of it has completely replaced the intent of all of those. I know you've heard this a million times, but I'm going to repeat it. In 2007 and 2008, under a different planning director and under a different um, uh, consultant, hundreds maybe a thousand people met in public meetings to express their ideas of what the vision of Calaveras County should be for the next 30 years. And that basically has been rewritten completely by the Planning Commission, by the members of the Planning Commission. There was very little participation at these meetings, but as Colleen pointed out, at the time that the uh, Planning Commission was going to vote on this, this particular version, which is before you today, there were 17 letters of comment in the packet. 16 of them supported the previous vision, and one of them supported this vision. So I, I know that there, when I have questioned um, Planning Commissioners, they say, well, times have changed. We have a new administration now. People don't feel the same way anymore, and you guys, sorry, you know, you're out in the cold. But I haven't seen those people come forth, either in writing or in testimony, to say that this is what the people now um, want for the county. And um, I'm not proposing, as neither has anybody else, that we rewrite the whole thing, 
but I, I, I have a real problem with making private property rights the centerpiece of the entire vision statement. Um, in, in several places, it says, for example, in economic development, too, um, it says the general plan will endeavor to preserve the natural beauty of the region consistent with diversified economic growth and the rights of private property owners. I should think we should get a couple of extra minutes. There's not that many people testifying, and this is, is the core of the entire, nope. One good for all, I don't believe. One. Okay. Um, it's up to the chair. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, well, then the other statement that I wanted to read, which came out of the um, Office of Planning and Research, basically says that the document should reflect wide public uh, participation and reflect the ideas of the people who live in the county because without civic engagement and civic participation, the document will not be a living document. Thank you. Thanks. Any other public comments? Yes, I'm Will Moore, and uh, I think this whole discussion is a clear case of uh, special interest versus the public interest. And I'm in favor of the public interest versus special interests. Tanya Dawson from Valley Springs. And I'm in favor of the public interest versus special interest. Um, and I think the public made it very clear in reelecting a whole new board of supervisors after the fiasco with Mintner Harnish. And, um, we like attention to property rights, and um, all the environmental interests are heavily weighed throughout the whole general plan. It has its very own element. So I think mentioning property rights a few times in the vision statement um, is, is um, not too much to ask for. So I'd like to encourage to leave it the way it is. I think it's fine the way it is. and. Um, it, it's just a few sentences, and it's just mentioned here and there. Um, so um, there is a special interest in this county, a special interest group that's been very active in getting more government control over our personal property, and it's had some very bad effects, as I mentioned earlier today. And I don't want to see that be happening again. It's just going to cause more division in our county if we start losing our property rights. I just wanted to do a quick mention about um, Calaveras Grown. It was mentioned earlier they didn't receive public money. It turns out it appears they received $5,000 from CCWD, and they've also received um, 70000 in donations and 5000 from Calaveras Community Foundation. So um, I would rather not see my tax money go to organizations that aren't representing um, that are saying they're not receiving public money if they've gotten CCWD money. So that's also my tax money, too. Even though I don't have CCWD service, part of my property taxes goes to CCWD, whether I like it or not. So um, I'd rather see my tax money just go to the basic government functions. So thank you. My name is Peter Race from Jenny Lynn. Uh, it was a lot of many times mentioned, by the way, I do support the proposed ideal and vision what the general plan should be. I've been going to the planning commissioners meeting and I want to thank you, those folks who appointed you rep my representatives. A uh, number of occasions it was mentioned that the, so many people went to those meetings. I would love to see the name of those listings of those names. I mean, I can take numbers out of the blue sky and say, hey, I had a thousand people come to this meeting. I want to know how many people went, the same people went to all these different meetings. Are they counted kind of each individual meeting a couple of times? That's one thing. I'd like to know how many people at those meetings signed in who don't live in a county, who came from different counties to guide us what's the proper thing to do. Because that was, I believe, going to some of those meetings, was not the vision 
of local people. It was vision of people from outside of county. Now, I don't want to get into personal individuals, but they did not represent the ideology and view of the people in this county. And people made it pretty clear because we have five new supervisors in here. We clean slate. We clean the, this place up. There's a good reason for it. Uh, the environment interest has been addressed and planning it being addressed many times in this vision. Nobody's left out. Uh, if those people back in uh, 2008, whatever they wanted to do, as far as I'm concerned, they were bought by Caltrans. And outside interest financed them. They did not represent. Even if they say it as 400 to 800 people, if 800 people had a vision, how many duplications? How many of those people from out of county? There was a good reason that Harnish was fi fired. <coughs> but, I, but I would love to see anybody show me where his ideology is functioning and functioning happily. So please, your people on the planning commissioners, a lot of work, a lot of boring work, an MVM that they had the patience and constitutional nobility that come up with this. So it doesn't offend anybody, unless a couple of frustrated people, they're not having their way. But elections have consequences, and that's why we get cleared up. Thank you. Any other public comments? Bill McManus, Calaveras Project. Um, I think what, what you sometimes lose sight of is that during these long processes where you're developing complicated, long-range documents, it's all very fresh in our minds right now what's going on. But when we get 10, 15, 20 years down the road and we're looking at this plan again, something like guiding principles is valuable. Because just like in the law, a lot of times you have to determine what legislative intent was, not just the words of the law. Guiding principles and the vision statement carry the message forward. This is what we wanted to do and this is how we went about it. And so for those who come after us and start deliberating these documents years from now, they can look at that and find a certain amount of uh, uh, intention, of, of the mindset of the people that were putting it together. Uh, I, I've been involved with general plan going back into the 2008. I don't know why we keep dragging this up. Uh, time has passed. You know, it's a new world even from the time of 2008. It doesn't matter how many people show up. You know, nowadays we do things via the internet with emails and I things and all that kind of stuff. Before that it was with letters and meetings. And way before that the determination was made by how many peasants showed up at the drawbridge with torches and pitchforks. We've evolved from that. The information is all around us and we have easy access to it. We interact with our elected officials a lot. We're able to look at meetings. We've got it on TV. And the one thing that that really bothers me the most <clears throat> is when there's an assault on property rights, like it's a dirty word. Well, the, the very, <laughs> the most basic freedom in this country is the right to own property and have it be yours, and you do with it what you want. And as far as property rights trumping anyone else, I, I, I've been, I don't know how many meetings where there's been a change, I, I don't know, did I mean to, I didn't mean to make you smirk. Uh -oh. I'll, I'll wait until you're done. It's distracting. Thank you. I've been to meetings where they've tried to change, make changes to the general plan. Everyone is noticed around the property. You have a right to go there. And if you object to your neighbor changing what he's doing with his property, you have the right to have your voice heard. And so I don't think that property rights ultimately just override automatically based on the general plan. Everyone has a chance to have their voice heard. And so I'm 
totally in favor of what the uh, Planning Commission has forwarded to the board for approval. They have done a lot of heavy lifting over the past year, and I think they, uh, their efforts need to be uh, acknowledged. And I acknowledged it, and I thank them. I thank you. Thanks. Uh, Marty Crane. First, I just wanted to say we keep hearing, as we just did, that um, property rights are the number one um, ultimate right to own property. Well, let's look at freedom of speech. It's in order for me to protect your freedom of speech, it, to my freedom of speech, I have to protect your freedom of speech. So that's a balance. And it's the same thing goes with property rights, what you're going to do on this property. You don't live in a vacuum. You live in a community, in a, in a county, where there are other people um, um, around you. And everything that we do impacts everyone else. And so the, the idea is also is to have a plan that it, it's called a general plan, but it's really a comprehensive plan that looks at the, the big picture. Um, doesn't mean it's vague. It means it looks at the big picture and considers all the aspects and ramifications and hopefully trying to keep everyone from fighting with each other and out of court, you know. And um, this is a working tool that people will come and see themselves and say, I have a development, I'd like to, I'd like to build this. I can see myself being successful because I can see it in this plan. There are tools, there are, there's a pathway moving forward for me. This is good. There are things put in place. It was very thoughtful. And um, so, um, I, and I, one other thing, I, I recall the instruction to the Planning Commission was not to go back and rewrite everything uh, subject by subject, line by line, word by word, which is exactly what's happening. I, that was not your instruction to them. It was to incorporate all the um, public comments into the draft. That's not what's been happening. So. Um, I think that's all I wanted to share. Thank you. Thanks, Marty. Okay, any other public comments? Board comments? Um, the only thing I have um, that I'd like to see is in, in the safety and natural resources section. Um, it doesn't Put anything it doesn't allow anything in there for the, the county to encourage programs so there's programs that can be brought in to help with uh, to protect citizens and resources from natural man-made hazards like right now we are uh, in the middle of a man-made hazard really and um, and so we're relying on everything from outside of our county to, to deal with that, which I think is just terrible. Um, if we were encouraging um, programs to prevent these sorts of things from happening, we would not probably be dealing with this right now, and, or at least at a lesser intensity, which would be really great if you ask me, because Personally, I don't want to ever go through this again, ever. Um, and so the maintenance of open space also, um, if, if there were encouragements and incentives <coughs> for, to help property owners for the maintenance and, and uh, open space, wildlife, agricultural lands and forests, um, I think that it would I think that the property owners would become better uh, stewards of their property <coughs> at their choice. Um, and if we were able to uh, encourage that by having programs that would provide incentives, then, then it, would be, uh, it would actually create value, in my opinion. And so um, other than that, I'm very happy with with, it's pretty short and sweet, really. Pretty simple. Um, I said from the beginning that I'm uh, a property rights advocate. I am. But I also understand that, that uh, you know, we all got to live here together. Um, 
I certainly don't like people looking in my backyard when I'm working on my car or doing whatever I'm doing. And um, and I, I don't want to I don't want it to encourage that at all. So, um, but but we do have a beautiful county, and I think there's not a person in here that doesn't want it to remain that way. Um, I think that everybody here actually appreciates the fact that we live in such a um, a beautiful place, and we want to keep it that way. I'm sure. But by 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 the you know. Devaluing properties is not the way to do it, and, and taking away uh, property rights. So, if there were any change at all for me, it would be that the county would encourage uh, programs that could help citizens um, to be able to um, uh, find ways to, to incentivize citizens for for uh, um, for the protection. Of the resources and natural man-made hazard uh, against that. <coughs> right now, what we have is, <clears throat> and we heard this morning Jeff White come in here and say, "Yeah, we, we're going to get the fire marshal from the state here, and we're going to get a fire plan going, and um, and that fire plan's probably going to be restrictive on roads, <coughs> the way you build your house, where you can build your house, how you can build your house, uh, and all of that." how you uh, maintain your properties, how many feet from your properties that you're gonna have to clear it, all of that, okay? Um, and it's gonna be on you to do that. If you don't do it, you get a little citation from CAL FIRE. CAL FIRE come out, they give you a little citation and pretty soon you get, that citation will grow if you don't, if you don't have the ability or if you can't do it. And uh, then it you know, eventually gets down to attaching your property. So, I would much rather have a plan in place or have the county move towards encouragement of, of uh, plans to be able to, to help um, property owners be able to do that, and incentivize, get incentivized plans in and be able to do that. Um, goes with the maintenance of, of open space. If open space is valuable, then that's what it is, it's value. And it's valuable to the property owner, too. It should be. That should be their value. They own it. So, so there, there should be a, a, a plan in place to be able to incentivize that person to keep it there. Great. That's a win-win. You don't take it from them. You don't take the right to use that property from them. So... It's just kind of how I feel about things. If I have something of value, then I probably should get compensated for it. Uh, if not, then I guess somebody's going to come and take it from me, right? So, um, so that's the the only changes that I would make. Other than that, I'm good with this. So I have a couple things. If you're done. <coughs> yeah, go ahead. Sorry, right, Steve. No, I was just going to ask Cliff a question. Oh. Um, I understand where you're going with and what you're saying, Cliff. But in the in the guiding principles in safety and natural resources, it says protect citizens and resources from natural man-made hazards. In essence, when the general plan evolves, and some of the concerns that are being expressed here too, of things that they're they are not seeing in it, as the general plan evolves, wouldn't that be the time when we go to that part of the general plan that we develop what you're you're bringing up? Mm -hmm. Policy. Not in, because uh, what you're saying is much more than in a, a guiding principle, and I support that, okay? okay. Uh, but I, I don't know if this is the time when that evolves in the general plan. <laughs> or how you can make a statement that, it, that makes that evolve in it. Yeah, I mean, if you said, uh, like, protect citizens and resources from natural and mad main uh, hazards, um, and you added on that, is that what you're saying, or the next one down, next bullet point down? Well, it would be on that one. The county, it would have said the county shall encourage programs to protect citizens, or to protect citizens and resources from natural and man-made hazards. Encourage programs. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have absolutely no problem <coughs> adding that there. I mean, it's, it's. I mean, I, I think, I mean, like I said before, I, have, I think we have 
uh, I'm, I'm in agreement with the rest of you guys on the vision statement. The guiding principles is where I get sideways on you. But that said, I would agree with uh, adding that. I have no problem with that. It's a little bit more specific, but it's not that much more specific than the rest of this. And why not add it to the very thing? No, well, say that sentence again compared to your other discussion. What's that? What you just said. The county shall encourage programs to protect citizens and resources from natural and man-made hazards. Oh, yeah, it's a pretty minor change. Well, if that's the case, and I like to see it under economic development. Perhaps I can add a suggestion, I'm not yeah. sure the exact language, but as a separate guiding principle that um, program shall be geared towards encouragement rather than mandates or something along those well, lines. So yeah. it will be applied to all of the various programs of economic development, community development, mm -hmm. public safety. But what I'm hearing, at least from Supervisor Edson, is that what you would like to see is that um, where we have a program that's sponsored by the county, that it's in the form of more of an encouragement to get people to do what we think is the right thing, rather than tell them this is what you have to do, and if you don't do it, you'll be in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's sort of what I hear from. So would that be um, necessary in here, or could that be just? <coughs> well, again, this is the overriding <coughs> principle, and then yeah. as we develop the policy language, the policy language would say, well, okay, this is is an encouragement or is it a mandate? Okay. And we're saying we prefer encouragement rather than mandates. Yeah. Um, and so. See, to me, this is saying that already it's mm -hmm. just when you get into the policy what cliff is discussing is going to evolve out of that and i i don't know if making it any more confusing so that comes next you're saying it well the forward. next step and what the planning commission is doing right now we've gone through land use <coughs> noise and resource production is to look at that policy language and refer back to these guiding principles. Is this consistent with these principles? Okay, okay. I, I'm uh, sorry. And, and, and then, so we have the goals and then the policies and the actual implementation programs. And each one of those um, are supposed to sort of go back um, you know, to the previous level of, of policy language. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mauer, I believe that's probably the solution to our, our yeah. issue here. Uh, once again, guidelines and when we go into policy, being more specific, I think that's a good fit. If we go with that, and, and Supervisor Edson has a great point. It really does. Right? Element, we we'll put it looking in the proper at, place. Didn't mean to interrupt. When we get into the safety element, we'll be looking at specific programs, certain policies about how to protect our community and its resources from wildfire, from flooding, from other hazards. Um, and how are we going to craft those policies? Um, the guiding principle will help us then. You say this is the direction we want to go. It's not going to be the heavy hammer of government saying this is what you have to do. It's going to be here are programs that we can make available to the public, um, okay. and to encourage them to maintain their property in a fire safe uh, manner. Um, so if you want to add a guiding principle along those lines, perhaps under role of the plan under that section, which is sort of more broad and general rather than just safety. And that would cover then all of these other um, plan areas um, to have some language about encouragement rather than um, mandates. Mandates. Because then we would be doing what we yeah, don't like being done to ourselves. I didn't. I, I don't really, good, that was a good point, Steve. Yeah. So I don't, I don't yeah, I, I'm not uh, trying to rain on your parade, Cliff. I don't mean it that way. Uh, no, no, it was a good point. I, did, I just didn't think of it that way. I'm glad you brought it up. Okay. As long no, as because I'm concerned, because I really, uh, I, I, you know, this 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 fire has had a profound effect on me. I got to tell you, <laughs> and I don't want to see it happen ever, to anybody ever again. And, and, and we have so many things that we can do that will help to not let that happen without uh, restricting everybody, you know, but but encouraging folks. Um, and I think that probably, up, you know, if you talk to almost anybody that right now, um, they're going to probably agree with you on that. There's a lot of good things going on right now too. Um, you know, the, the, just the deal with uh, Calaveras Grown and what they're doing right now is that's encouragement. That is that's that's a real good a good a good example. So, um, I'm I understand what Steve was talking about. Now I'm good with that. Okay. So, um, 
So I, I was just looking at the old, uh, the old draft vision and, and guiding principles statement um, that's in uh, attachment one on our staff report. And uh, the vision statement looks, the actual vision statement looks uh, pretty, pretty close to the other, other one. Um, but I have to say, I, I just like the, I like this one better. Um, and uh, I think it shows uh, kind of a, a more concise, um, just a better all around uh, guiding principles for where I think the, the plan should go. Uh, so I would support, um, I would support this one uh, over the one that's in front of us right now. Um, so. And I think that uh, um, it has been uh, vetted by a larger uh, group of people um, throughout the county as well. Um, you know, if we added some language in there on property rights, um, that would be fine uh, with me. But this one, I think, what happened is the Planning Commission kind of went off on their own tangent, but, which is uh, their right, but I do think that all the work that went into uh, the previous one uh, should not be thrown out um, and uh, it should be uh, included. Uh, I, I just think it's a, a, a better all-around um, guiding principles. So I, I would support that. Okay. So shall we take a poll or vote? I think we have to vote. It's not a poll. Yeah. yeah. It's a right. Vote, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Can I have a motion, please? I move that we approve as presented. A second. Okay. So Supervisor Kearney moves that we appro uh, approve uh, as presented the. Uh, vision statement and the guiding principles that uh, Director Maurer has presented. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, and a second by uh, Supervisor Ponte. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, 4 1. All right, let's move on to 15. That's where I recognize you from, Caltrans. Black yeah. Trail, yeah. Yeah, I know, Matt. So there you go. Okay. Yeah, Caltrans. Matt is not from Caltrans. Well, we're getting up and a fire on that one. Matt is not from Caltrans. He's our consultant. Yeah, Wagon Trail engineer. You want to give him five minutes to set up? Sure. All right, that'd be great. We got a five minute break, please. This on? Yes. We're, I guess, reconvened. I'm Jeff Krovitz, Director of Public Works, Calaveras County. Um, item 15 on the agenda deals with the Wagon Trail Project, which is State Route 4, west of um, the City of Angels Camp. And this has been a long-term, high-priority project for um, the county in terms of trying to improve safety, alignment, functionality, operations of what has been quoted as the last state route, unengineered un section of State Highway in the state of California, meaning that it, the alignment in terms of the way it was laid out was done by Wagon Trail, and it had never been engineered for uh, modern day vehicular traffic. So it is necessarily slow, windy, curvy with problems. Um, so it is a high priority project. It's been in the process for a number of years, and we are coming up to milestones. And um, the current milestone where we're at is what's called the end of preliminary engineering, where we are coming up with a, coming up to an approved project report, which describes uh, most of the engineering and design criteria for your alternatives and impacts on right of way and, um, and traffic handling, things like that, as well as approval of an environmental document. Now, the environmental document to be finalized must have a preferred alternative selected. Since this is a state highway project, the selection of the preferred alternative resides within Caltrans, um, our local district, and that decision will be made. But they do not believe in making these decisions in a vacuum. Therefore, they seek um, recommendations from local governing agencies. Um, we've presented this project um, in the draft environmental document, the draft project report form uh, last October, 
at a public hearing and received a lot of comments and subsequently presented it to the COG board uh, for their recommendation of a preferred alignment. And they did select a preferred alignment unanimously to make a recommendation to Caltrans. Um, we're also presenting this to this board for a similar action. And um, uh, the City of Angels is also taking it to their city council for similar action. Um, we're hoping that all three governing bodies make the same recommendation, and I think they will. Um, the project really does describe a clear um, preference for alternatives. And this does reflect, uh, I believe, the vast majority of the impacted property owners along the alignments um, that are proposed. So uh, Matt Satow, who is working for Calaveras County in the COG, acting as project manager on this project, doing a great job, by the way, um, is here, he'll give a brief uh, history and then he'll give you some details on these two alternatives um, and um, answer any questions that you may have. This will be a repeat for, I believe, Supervisor Kearney and Supervisor Ponte as they've seen it before with the COG board. So if they'd like to take a quick nap, that would be a good time. Uh, thank you. Thank you. All right. I want to make this much more exciting, though. But, <laughs> and clearly, I work for Jeff. He just summarized everything we present to you in about the last uh, three minutes. But uh, we'll go through the presentation. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Supervisor Wright got in. Um, this is exciting for me. This is, uh, I've been working on this since late 2012. This is a large milestone we've reached in this project. Uh, we released the environmental document. We're at the, almost near the finish line on the environmental stage, which is, a, which is big for the project development phase. Uh, when you're trying to deliver a large transportation project on the state highway system. So for that reason, <coughs> then, um, you are the last uh, of, the, of the what I call the road show. Um, we certainly presented this to the COG board and uh, <coughs> as well to the uh, City of Angels camp, City Council. And uh, they, they again chose unanimously for uh, one of the alternatives as well. So um, we'll go through that in this presentation. Um, as Jeff mentioned today, really just want to give you some quick background on the project, uh, talk a little bit about the process for completing the environmental and then <clears throat> go over what factors that the group, um, the working group will, will take into consideration when making a recommendation for preferred alternative. And then uh, take any questions at the end. So, you know, I'll spare you the details of how we got here. I mean, but this has been going on for many years. And the two alignment alternatives, there are two viable alternatives that have been looked at for this process. The blue alignment that you see there is, is alternative one and the red alignment is alternative two. The main difference between those two alternatives, the red alignment alternative two utilizes a lot more of the existing right-of-way as well as the existing improvements, such as in particular up at Pool Station Road. Um, alignment two, the red alignment, uses what Caltrans has already constructed there and builds off of that. The process, as mentioned, uh, this started back in 2001 with Caltrans. And uh, we picked up this project in late 2012 to essentially take the uh, environmental and project approval to the finish line. You can see that it's taken us all the way through from 2012. Uh, we conducted all of our engineering and environmental studies out in the field. We spent much of 2014 and 15 really compiling those studies and making it through the uh, somewhat onerous Caltrans review process in order to release the document to the public, uh, which we did. In, in September of this year. Uh, we held a public hearing in October over in Angels Camp, uh, received public comments. Document. So in order to complete the environmental document, um, the PDT makes a recommendation on the alternative. Now the PDT is, stands for Project Development Team. The project development team has um, folks from Caltrans, uh, Calaveras Council of Governments, Calaveras County, which I represent on there, as well as Jeff, uh, City, of, City of Angels Camp, and then some of the consultant teams that's on there. Th this is really the working group. This is the one with the boots in the ground. Um, this team is going to make a recommendation to the Caltrans District Director. Uh, the Caltrans District Director will make a decision on the preferred alternative to carry forward into the final environmental document. Once that decision is made, the team will draft the final environmental document and it will go through the final review and approvals at Caltrans. The factors that the working team that we take into consideration when making that recommendation, um, we certainly take into account the findings from all the environmental and engineering technical studies that we've conducted. 
Uh, the project cost is a, is a big uh, deal in this case, and we do take that into consideration. Also, uh, one thing that's, that we also have to consider is with each of those alternatives, we have to take into consideration how well each of those alternatives can we break it apart into smaller pieces that we can implement. You know, with a limited amount of funding that a smaller county like this has, you don't have the capacity and ability to deliver the whole project at once. So each alternative has to be able to, be able to deliver in phases. Um, that's something we take into consideration. Also, um, we strongly take into consideration the comments that we receive at the public hearing, um, as, as well as the recommendation by the local agencies or boards. So I'm going to give you some, just a summary of some of the things of all those factors that were taken into account, some of the highlights of it. Um, on the environmental findings, alternative two, I can tell you overall, has just less environmental impacts than, than, environmental, than alternative one. And some of the highlights of that were um, just less oak tree impacts, uh, significantly less farmland impacts, and less right-of-way needed uh, for folks on this one. On the project cost comparison, uh, it's pretty straightforward as well. Uh, alternative two is significantly less, 76 million as opposed to 91 million uh, to deliver. Uh, the ability to phase <coughs> for construction, as I mentioned before, is, is really important with given a cost of either 76 million or 91 million, the project has to be able to bro be broken apart into smaller pieces as your funding is available. And so when you look at these two alternatives again, the blue alternative, because it uses so much space that's outside of the existing roads, you, you don't have a lot of options to phase that project. You have to build it. There's really only three phases you can build that project. You can build the western portion from Appaloosa to, to the west. You can build the middle section from Appaloosa to Gelding or you could build gelding to the east to Stockton. It's three phases, essentially. The red alignment, because it uses a lot more of the existing road system, we can break that apart into smaller pieces. And I'm going to show you some examples of that. So this is the red alignment. This is alignment number two. Um, you can actually break it apart into four phases. So you can have your eastern portion from gelding to the east to Stockton. You can have the middle segment from Appaloosa to gelding. Or you could, because it uses Pool Station Road, you can break it apart to west of Pool Station Road or east of Pool Station Road. Um, those are still pretty large segments. And again, because it uses so much of the existing road, this is just looking at Pool Station Road. We can actually break that segment into four separate segments as well, from Bonanza Mine um, to somewhere between Hunt Road, where we leave the existing alignment, and then to Pool Station Road. Uh, down to Appaloosa, and then even at the intersection of Appaloosa, we can break that apart into a separate project as well. Because many of you know, at Appaloosa, that's, that's where we have um, a significant issue of coming out of Appaloosa. If you're coming out of Appaloosa and trying to look to the east, you can't see over the hill to the east there. It's a, it's a, it's a real issue for those folks there. So that's a separate project that we could actually break out with Alternative 2. From the public comments, um, again, we received quite a few public comments. On, I'm going to give you the highlights of it. Essentially, I believe now from the count, we received it was either nine or ten comments in support of Alternative 2 from property owners and stakeholders. There was zero in favor of Alternative 1, um, just to let you know. The rest of the comments we received as well, were um, some of them were mainly focused towards individual properties. I won't go over those comments there driveway access, uh, individual things we'll have to address. Um, each of the comments that we received were required to respond in writing in the final environmental document to those comments. And then, of course, the recommendation of the local agencies. And as I mentioned, uh, the Calaveras Council of Governments was a unanimous vote um, in support of Alternative 2. And as well as uh, City of Angels Camp made the same recommendation unanimously in support of Alternative 2. Um, it's, I can tell you from the PDT team, uh, we haven't officially taken that action yet, but I can tell you that from all the factors that we take into account, um, there's nothing that would lead us at this point to go with Alternative 1. Alternative 2 seems to be a fairly clear uh, alternative in this case. So I, I've shortened this up in the COG presentation a little bit. I took out some things. If you have any questions, I certainly can answer those. While you're thinking, um, I'd like to address a little bit of where do we go from here and what is the process moving ahead? Um, and then maybe you'll generate some questions on the two alignments. Um, 
It will take a, a couple more months to address all of the comments received on the environmental document. Then it has to go through a fairly um, rigorous review process of Caltrans before we get signatures on both the environmental document and the, and the, draft, and the project report. Um, once those are received, we then formally have uh, preliminary engineering completed, at which point we can begin moving ahead with right-of-way um, acquisition as well as design, which is plan, specs, and estimate. And then the final phase, of course, would be construction. Um, as Matt mentioned several times, uh, funding is a huge issue. Um, to date, we funded this entire project, the vast majority of this project, with local funds. Uh, local regional improvement funds and um, as a region we do not generate enough money to be able to complete this project 70 million dollars would essentially potentially have us making a promise 50 years in the future of our current funds to get it built and we also believe that there should be some help because this route has regional significance as well as local significance um, so it's providing um, a corridor for more than just the people who live along it and the people who live east or west of it. It's, it's regionally uh, significant for the Central Valley, for people wanting to come up to big trees, on and on. So um, we have reached out to management at Caltrans and explained to them our difficulties and asked them if they would consider um, or if there were any possibilities or probabilities to getting pieces of these segments, these you know, divisible segments funded through other funding sources. And they have committed to us that they will actively research that um, and actively um, implement pieces of this project into their future programming. Um, and I do believe that uh, those promises were made with, uh, with, uh, with candor and truth. I believe that they will be doing that. Um, in the interim, looking ahead from the county's perspective, we spent a lot of time and a lot of effort getting ourselves to this point. And it's a very difficult point to get to. Um, once you get project approval, everything else just becomes um, the engineering, which in many ways is the simplest thing because the decisions have been made, your criteria, your, 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 the criteria have been defined, and your um, restrictions have been identified. So it's basically putting your, uh, your, your mouse to your computer and doing the design and getting it prepared for advertisement, doing the negotiations to purchase the right-of-way. Um, I am personally, and I've talked to a number of people on the PDT team, I'm reluctant to go out and acquire right-of-way if I haven't got a certainty of funding for the construction um, because that puts hardships on the landowners that you're acquiring the right of way from and if you don't come and follow that immediately with a project it doesn't make sense and so I've indicated to the PDT team that I'm hoping that as we break this project up into bits and pieces and we find pieces that are fundable we will be acquiring the right of way specifically for those that we can construct um, uh, our thinking is, is that uh, we will get project approval. We currently have funding to bring it to the end of PSNE, but in terms of the right-of-way acquisition, we'd only do that for the project that we have funding guaranteed for. So, um, and there are uh, several scenarios um, in terms of types of projects or types of pieces of this project that we can fund with our current funding levels and additions that we can add to it that would also be meaningful that we can add should we get funding from additional sources such as the SHOP program which is a state highway uh, operational safety improvement program. It's a long acronym. So um, we do feel like we have um, enough money to complete a significant process and be able to deliver a piece of this project um, with our current funding levels. It's not the entire project, and it's not even the majority of the project, but it is significant. So um, that part is the good news. Um, the bad news is that we're still awaiting word on how we can fund other uh, very important pieces of this. Jeff? Yeah. When you uh, talk about the funding, is that uh, funding coming from uh, what source? Well, it would, uh, we're hoping it would come from several sources, but mostly we're hoping it's coming from out of our county regional funds. We're hoping it's coming out of the state funds so, on correct. various programs. The, so, uh, the, the money that Jeff's talking about right now that would yeah. be used for design and, and right away, 
that's that's already been allocated from the st uh, state transportation improvement funds that your county receives. Thank you. The environmental studies are in process, correct? Actually, the environmental studies are completed. Oh, the EIR is? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's a joint NEPA and CEQA document, and an EIR references a flavor of the NEPA side. So um, what we do is we call it a joint environmental document or clearance in accordance with CEQA and NEPA. We've actually, I believe this is a mitigated negative declaration under um, CEQA and a, what was it under NEPA, Matt, do you recall? Initial study. I was trying to remember at the COG meeting, did, did you say we have already purchased mitigation credits for some of this? No. We no? Haven't. Okay. Okay, thanks. No, it's probably, it probably the other something else that we were In fact, our, right now our process, we've submitted to uh, Fish and Wildlife Service our potential impacts on the project on the alternative. Right. And so they'll come back to us and let us know what the mitigation will be for it. So that's just in process right now. And, and programmatically, we can't actually spend money purchasing a mitigation bank prior to us completing the, the preliminary engineering phase because it's well, considered a right-of-way phrase. That's what I thought. I, I was pretty sure I was confusing it with another project when I was looking at okay. this. So did that generate any questions on the two alternative alignments? No. No. Nope. Sit down and let the public... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not an engineer. You guys picked it, right? Well, I think we're supporting it. I mean, we have the two options there, and the what I call the red line option was certainly vetted through COG and the City of Angels, and at the public hearing process, it was pretty much, I won't say obvious, but majority supported the red line. It was less property involved. It was less... Um, environmental issues so there was um, you know good all the way around and you know I have to say during this process too that you know I I think I can sit here and say that each and every property owner along the way um, has been invited to be a part of this process some more active than others um, in their comment period or you know being able to meet one-to-one -one with the engineering design folks that sort of thing so there are some folks who have opted not to be as involved as they, as they have been invited or were invited to be. The red line was alternative two, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to make sure I didn't get my yeah. line colors. Can you put that back up there? Can you put that back? <coughs> the red line. <coughs> if if you look on the the charts, you'll see exactly what uh, Supervisor Pawnee's telling you. The the uh, impacts are less, it costs less to do, and uh, it's probably the best choice, hands down. And in fact, I think at the COG meeting, if someone wonders, I asked you about that large loop, does it significantly mm -hmm. increase the mileage, and it really doesn't, right? Okay. No. No, actually, you know, it really, because the, the loop, we're talking about, it just really follows the existing alignment more and uses more of the existing improvements out there in the existing right-of-way, and that's why the cost is so much. But I thought right. about your, your question a little more as I was driving home. If we have another meeting, I'll ask you the same question. <laughs> <laughs> so and there's that. still work to be done with the individual owners in regards to more specific right access issues and, mm -hmm. you know, how many access points and, you know, for folks along the way, it's... Uh, you know, their outbuildings or, you know, perhaps their fencing and water troughs and things along that line. So there's still the fine tuning that needs to happen as we continue this process. So that isn't going to, like, wipe out that duck pond, is it, out there? Which one? Which one? Down there by, <laughs> uh, on the first loop on the right. Heading to? From? From copper. From 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 copper. Yeah. Is that right? Well, it's possible. Seven point seven acres of floodplain and three creeks are going to be affected by option two. So it, it could, yes. 
I can't see that happening. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, Supervisor Edson, as you can see, coming on the copper side, we're following the exact alignment. What we're doing is widening to achieve uh, full shoulder width. And so that portion, that, that westernmost portion, before it begins um, to diverge, uh, is essentially on the exact alignment. So you don't have impacts too far out. And part of those shoulders have already been constructed. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, I'm good with... Uh... So what we're asking for is we're asking for a vote of the board that um, recommends um, a preference for alternative two. Okay. Can I have a motion, please? Public comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Public comment. One out of five, six of you ought to have something to say. <laughs> They're all on our side. <laughs> right? And I, I would. Yeah. <laughs> Could I have a, a motion? I would make a motion to support alternate number two, the red line. Okay. I second the motion. All right, so we have a motion by Supervisor Ponte, a second by Supervisor Kearney. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's 5 0. Okay. I'd like to thank the board and like to thank Matt. Um, at Drake Haglin, as well as our consultant, Dawkin Engineering. They've been doing um, outstanding work. I mean, Matt from, I a green job Matt from Caltrans. And, uh, <laughs> after the second time, I'm starting to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work here. It's come a little way since 2012, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's a lot of work here. Yeah, me neither. I must be having fun. Okay. So we have. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you. Matt. So we have the uh, consent agenda. So consent agenda items are expected to be routine and non-controversial. They will be acted upon by the board in one uh, one time without discussion. Any board member, staff member, or interested party may request removal of an item from the consent agenda for later discussion. Any members, any member of the public wishes to uh, remove a consent agenda, agenda item? Any members of the board? Yes, I do, Chair. Number 20. 20. I'll make a motion for the rest of the consent agenda. I need to move 22 to make corrections, please. 22, okay. 20 uh, 22. I'll make a motion for the uh, consent agenda be approved, uh, uh, excluding 20 and 22. All right. So, can I have a second, please? A second. Second. Okay, so I have a motion by Supervisor Wright, second by Supervisor Ponte. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Number 20. Supervisor Thank you, Alder. Chair. Um, I requested this to be pulled so we could have a discussion, discussion on this and bring the board up to speed. What's recently happened uh, just last week, um, I was advised by Supervisor Randy Handbelt of Tuolumne County that a task force has been formed to the governor's office regarding the dead tree emergency proclamation uh, issued by Governor Brown. That task force consists of representatives from a variety of agencies, including uh, representatives from Amador County and Tuolumne County, and now, most recently, after participating in those discussions at CSAC convention, I have been uh, requested and appears to be appointed to that task force to represent Calaveras County on the governor's task force. Uh, this issue was discussed quite extensively uh, at CSAC among all the representatives uh, from the 58 counties, more importantly, the counties affected by our bark beetle problem and our dead tree problem. Uh, the task force is, is designed to bring attention to not only public lands on the state level, but also the private lands. So we're suffering especially in District 3 and in District, uh, uh, district 2, uh, Supervisor Wright's district. Um, the reason I pulled it once again is to bring that, that, that information to the board and to the public here. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. 
that's okay. Yeah, th um, did they? I mean, because that's obviously my main concern is the you know uh, the private lands because you know we don't have any control of the national forest to speak of. So, um, did they talk about uh, I mean, you know funding and you know or even like what do we do? I mean, we have a lot of private landowners that you know can cut the trees down. But where do you take them? You know, and uh, all those. I mean, it, uh, is there something that's actually moving? Because they've been talking about it for a while. Yes, uh, they they covered uh, the areas of taking the trees down, disposal of the trees, things of that sort, and things of that type. Uh, it, it appears to be a very concerned effort now. Um, I've got uh, well for your information. Uh, I do have the members of this task force list, yeah. and like I said, it probably consists of about 40 different agencies. Yeah, I have the, I have the, I'm on some of the emails um, Good. that are going around. I'm just, I was wondering if, you know, do we want to uh, see if we can bring it, bring it back for, uh, we talked about it briefly at, at the last when we declared it, bringing it back for more discussion about what we can do, especially with the private lands, as a standalone agenda item. Uh, next year at the beginning of the year do we have to redo this every two weeks to keep it going um yes we do mm -hmm. so we could still We're bring it back every any hour every two weeks yeah. okay so but, but yeah but when we bring it back and we have discussion about like what what are our options as a county entity to help with this emergency i mean it's an emergency it, it there's a lot of i mean we all know there's a lot of problems but is there anything can we, can we go over a list of options of that, something we can do? And, and I think initially the, uh, the good resource will be Supervisor Oliveira because he will be sitting on the governor's task force and as they work through those issues, we'll be able to bring those back to the county. I have an idea on that. Um, remember how we had uh, RCRC come and their lobbyist uh, gave a really good presentation about the marijuana laws? Mm -hmm. Can we get somebody like that from this task force uh, that could come and give an overview of everything, do you think? Uh, they've had one meeting, okay. and our next meeting is scheduled for the 14th of December okay. in Sacramento, okay. which I will be attending. Uh, I will make that inquiry. Uh, in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, it'd be a good idea. Maybe if you have questions that you want uh, Mike to ask for us, then you know, maybe, maybe I'll, I'll go, maybe I'll go with you. That might be a very good move, Supervisor Wright. And I think along those lines, Cal Fire has a person who can make that kind of presentation. Too, if that's oh, of interest. Calfire also has programs. What time do they have in that? Um, you can email me. That's okay. I can email. So you. the other the other question would be, since we this since uh, the governor made this uh, state of emergency, right? And we are in a state of emergency anyhow. Um, there are I know that Cal Fire has programs that <laughs> would would uh, allow us to be able to. Um, Remember that meeting we had on watershed stuff? Well, they there? have potential to help yeah. the private. Yeah, so they members. have they have a program that's straight up. We'll, we'll, you know, they'll pay seventy five percent for, or something like that. And and then I, I, you know, and I think that if you push them a little bit harder, then they seem to be able to come up with a little bit more benefits, uh, like in kind contribution and things right. like that. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, it would be a good idea to find out if, uh, you know, if Cal Fire is going to be able to kick in on this as well. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll call, contact Cal Fire. Okay. That was my one. Oh, I need clarity. Cool. Oh, that's so that's can, all I have, Chair, on that yeah. issue. Can, can we, uh, along Chris's suggestion, can we have... Um, Cal Fire? Yeah. Can we ask Cal Fire to uh, make a presentation? We, we can, yeah, oh, work on that right? yeah. 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 after the yeah. first of the year. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. I know it's just going to get, I mean, I, I was watching a little Cal Fire video on it, and they're like, it's going to get worse over the next four years. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, we got so let's it. try to be proactive and not yeah. react to it later. Yeah. All right. Good. So we need to, Public what do we comment? need to do on this? Let's make vote on, make a motion on 20. Public comment on 20. Uh, public, public comment. Public. Don't break the doors down. Looks like it's me. Okay. Um, I just wanted to reiterate that this is something that the board brought up when you did adopt the, um, the, the, the uh, motion um, to declare the, the state of emergency for the trees was the private end of it. And I, I think maybe <clears throat> the other option in addition to what what uh, Supervisor Oliveira and Supervisor Wright are going to do, and I think that's excellent, um, is to get um, 
get RCRC and CSAC involved, more really RCRC even than CSAC, but it's, it's best to have them both involved, maybe after the new year to see if there's something that can be done in the next legislative session for, for private property relief. Well, I'll be up at RCRC on Thursday, Excellent. so I'll talk to them. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, see, they did a good presentation on the marijuana thing, I thought. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll talk to them about it on Thursday. Okay. I have a motion, please, on 20. I move we continue the resolution for a local state of emergency on tree mortality. Okay. I have a second? I have a second. So I have a motion by Supervisor Curdy, second by Supervisor Wright. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. 22. Mr. <coughs> Barr. Hi, I'm Todd Barr with Code Compliance. I just need to make a correction here. I made a mistake when I submitted this apparently. Uh, but this should read, Uphold Administrative Citation 15-27 regarding Joseph and Lori Janusa, 2000 Nickerson Lane, Murphy's, California. Okay. Rather than the Emory word, I don't know where that came from. Is it really in two <laughs> districts? What's that? Is it really in two districts? No, nah, I bet you it's got, it got cross. District, district 3? <coughs> I bet you somebody went halfway through a sentence and they went halfway through another one. Where is Nickerson Lane? Supervisorial district, district two, district three. Dad, three. It's three. District three. It's three. Murphy's three, district three. It's gonna say that's a heck of a campsite. So that's the um, amendment or the amendment to the. Yes, that's the correction to that. Yes. All right. And what was the names? It would be Joseph and Lori Janusa are the property owners. Janusa? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It is in the, it's in the discussion yeah. summary correctly. Right. It's yeah. just in the uh, it's recommendation correct. wrong. Yeah. All right, could I have a motion, please? Public comment. Public comment first. Okay, motion. Board comment? Board comment. Uh, point of clarification, it was reported in a... Uh, an informational source that supervisor brought these uh, citations regarding this, and I just want to make sure that that is not the case. Uh, and could you take us 10 seconds and tell us how this citation is brought? <coughs> By code compliance and supervisors have nothing to do with that. Yes, the supervisors do not have anything to do with issuing administrative citations. Actually, this citation was brought forward because this case has been going on approximately four or five years, if I remember correctly. Uh, and uh, basically, it's been a public nuisance. There's been construction out there with no permits. Uh, they're holding events without the proper permits. Basically, um, it's, uh, the neighborhood's really not happy about what's going on okay. at all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Make the motion. I'll move. Second. A motion by Supervisor Oliveira, second by Supervisor Wright. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Report out. Debbie, you want to go first? Sure. Um, attended a COG meeting earlier this month and uh, pleased to report that we appointed three citizen folks to our COG board. Uh, John Gomes was reappointed to serve a two year term. Um, Tim Muterdes, who had been serving as an alternate, is serving a one year term. And Justin Catalano, who has been, um, Justin. Um, is now serving a one-year term after many attempts. Uh, meanwhile, we still need an alternate, and um, that is the one person or one opening that we have left on the COG board to fulfill that. In addition to that, we heard a report on our transit uh, system and where we go in the years to, to come. And uh, we are now seeking public comment on that plan. For those of you who uh, uh, would like to see the plan, I, I don't know if you got that in your mail or not. It's a good two inch thick plan, but it's also on the Cobb website to review. So I encourage you to do that. Um, public comments will be taken for the next several weeks and then we'll issue a final report um, sometime when we meet again in February. We don't have a COG meeting in January per our JPA agreement. Um, LAFCO um, produced a study on uh, community service assessment districts, and I've been getting a lot of inquiries into the CSAs in my district, 
And I just want to let the uh, folks know that on January 25th um, at the 6 p.m. at the LAFCO board meeting, there'll be a comment, um, a, a, what do you call it? A, what do you call those things where the public comes in to talk about public it? Hearing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> a public hearing on the CSA study. And this will give CSA's uh, membership an opportunity to um, just test in you guys to yeah. see if you're uh, a <laughs> long meeting. So uh, this will give CSA membership opportunity to comment on it as well as provide some written comment now. Um, I have an EMS uh, monthly meeting tomorrow in Copperopolis, 9 o'clock at the fire station. Uh, Child Support uh, Council will be meeting on the 21st of December in Sonora be attending uh, IHSS meeting. Um, you saw today, this morning, the results of the meeting we had on the 30th. And uh, we'll meet again on December 14th. I attended a commission on aging um, kind of holiday annual, I don't know if it was annual meeting or not, but holiday festivities uh, luncheon that was very nice and very nice to see a, a well-rounded uh, group of people serving on that commission and doing lots of good work. Attended the Columbia College open house, and as a result of that open house, there were some concerns and questions about transit, and um, I've referred that on to the transit, in addition to um, encouraging transit folks to talk to Columbia College about advertising on the bus as another means to get the word out about uh, classes at the Vallecito um, Columbia College Community Outreach Center in downtown Vallecito. Um, also would like to put a shout out. We have a variety of commissions um, that will be seeking membership as we start the new year. I know our January 5th meeting, hopefully we can reappoint and appoint some new folks so our commissions can be fast and furious from day one, including the Parks and Recreation Commission, which each of you need to make sure you get your district representation out there. On. Uh, the cemetery districts and all of our districts are in desperate need of new um, members and, and appointing some of the ones who'd like to serve again. Our fish and game, our in-home health services. A number of our CSAs will be appointing um, new members starting in 2016 and our library commission. So folks can go on the county website and learn a little bit more as well as the application is on there. And I know that county uh, admin office would love to get some applications in by the 20th of December so that we can have it on our agenda for January 5th and move full speed ahead, especially with that Park and Recreation Commission. Uh, Red Hill, Jeff announced December 11th will be opening. And I continue to attend the um, Calaveras Rebuilds Committee. Um, which meets currently right now every Thursday at 3 o'clock. And they continue to look at avenues for funding sources outside our communities um, to help rebuild homes. And uh, they have a group of folks who are working on about, mm, the number goes from 60 to, to 80 mm -hmm. folks who qualify for rebuilding a home and kind of working with those folks about where funding sources might be to help people rebuild. And, it's a, it's a huge community effort on, on many levels and currently being chaired by Mr. Cinder, which is, which uh, he's doing a good job. So that's all I have. Uh, Friday on the 4th, I attended and actually participated in the White Pines Christmas Parade of Lights, one of the first annual events held. Uh, very well attended. We had uh, a large group of people estimated somewhere between 1,000 to 1,200 along the streets of White Pines. Uh, we had good participation from the community and the businesses in the floats. Uh, we tend to make this a, an actual <coughs> annual event, and the proceeds of this uh, actually uh, was dedicated to the White Pines Park Committee for the maintenance of the White Pines Lake and the White Pines Park. Uh, on Tuesday, I did uh, attend the CSAC uh, annual convention and picked up valuable information. Uh, during that four-day period, I attended workshops. Uh, it was involved in discussions 
uh, with the Administration of Justice, which I was appointed to that committee uh, in this particular convention. Additionally, uh, made contacts with uh, the folks on the task force for the uh, dead tree and um, bark beetle problem uh, that we discussed earlier. Uh, I was able to attend uh, the workshops uh, regarding marijuana initiatives uh, as adopted by counties and, and what is expected and what's going to be happening. I found that very informative and picked up information from law enforcement agencies, from district attorneys, from county councils, things of that sort. I uh, was able to foster good relationships with our new incoming board. Uh, our new board president for CSAC is going to be, actually he's already installed, and that's going to be Richard Foster from Amador County, our neighboring county to the north. Uh, I did attend a town hall meeting in Murphy's on Saturday. Um, was able to speak with CAL FIRE and actually the folks of, oh, of Forest Meadows Homeowners Association in regards to uh, the, the Butte fire and things that were associated with that. Uh, additionally, we talked about future plans for Forest Meadows as far as uh, additional escape routes, things of that type, uh, and things that we can address in the future after we look back on what happened in the Butte fire. It was a very informal uh, meeting uh, with the residents providing all the questions for discussion, and I thought it was very worthwhile. Uh, it, was, it was one of the first times we were able to meet with Forest Meadows since I took office, and I was really appreciative, appreciative of, the, of the participation by the, by the residents there. Um, I've got my calendar filled for coming events before the first of the year as far as meetings and things of that sort. Uh, but I continue to uh, take an active interest and I plan to be more active in outside committees and events in our county starting January 1st. Thank you. I uh, <coughs> had the real pleasure of getting myself invited to a rotary breakfast last Wednesday in uh, Valley Springs. Uh, David Tuno, a planning Commissioner from District 5 was there making a presentation on the general plan, so I got to study it twice uh, when this came out and hear him too. And I, I do want to give another shout out to the Planning Commission. These people have been working extraordinarily hard uh, and doing a, an incredible job for us. All of them have been. Uh, and it was, it was a good, good thing for me to attend. Uh, on Thursday, I attended COG. Uh, the COG meeting here and uh, reiterate what Supervisor Pawnee said. It was, a, it was a good meeting. We heard a lot. A lot of information was shared. On Friday, I attended the Commission on Aging meeting. Uh, I sort of uh, begged my way into having them adopt me as a de facto member because their expertise helps me with my JPA 12 understandings. Uh, and after the meeting, I uh, stayed at uh, Foothill Village, which was where the meeting was held, and they hosted an incredible lunch that was, was a very nice time. It was a very classy facility and was uh, glad to be a part of it. On Saturday morning, I was uh, at the parade in Valley Springs. I finally achieved my greatest uh, goal and got to be the traffic monitor. Uh, I have pictures. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think it was fun. Yeah, and I didn't get to do it in the sixth grade, so I finally got it. Uh, and uh, the parade was was pretty incredible because I've been to to them in the past, but there are more entries this year than there have been. Uh, everybody seemed to be having a great time. Forty-one entries. Yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, a shout out to the VSABA and Bud and Candace Kesey. Uh, they put a lot of effort into it. Uh, it turned out very nice, and that evening I went, uh, there was another event I wanted to go to on behalf of the fire, and I'm sorry I couldn't make that. I was at the Terrace Shopping Center where they light their Christmas tree the first time. Uh, that was very well attended, so, you know, I really get a feeling that our commerce is alive and well in the county, and uh, it's really starting to come back, and I'm very, very encouraged. Uh, this Thursday, I have a JPA 12 uh, joint meeting in Sonora, and uh, I'm looking forward to the one to three inches of rain that has uh, been predicted while I travel over there. 
<laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, I have a first five meeting coming up uh, Friday, and a community action agency meeting uh, coming up next Monday as well. Um, that's probably going to be a phone meeting. And um, I will say that uh, it's pretty exciting. There's a, a new market opened at, in McCollum Hill, and uh, I uh, I remember going to a market there when I was a kid, and I'm really happy to, to see that there is a, a, as you were saying about private enterprise, uh, you know, that there's a new market there. Um, that's wonderful. And, uh, I had absolutely nothing to do with it, but I will go there and, and, and help them by uh, buying stuff. So, in that mm -hmm. sense, I, I encourage everybody to do the same. And that's all. Okay. Good. <coughs> so, as Debbie said, uh, uh, Columbia, Columbia opened their first. Uh, campus on uh, in Calaveras at uh, the Balacito School and it's called uh, Columbia College Community Outreach um, something that has been in works for quite a while um, so uh, and, and the nice thing about it is is Columbia and uh, and Delta College are um, are uh, collaborating on classes so that we can have uh, better uh, post-secondary education classes within all of Calaveras County. So some of them are being held here at high school, some of them will be held up there at uh, Felicito. So that was really, it was actually a really nice campus too. It's cute, it's a real neat place. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> and, and they have a sign. Yeah, I, like, a sign. I like the sign, it's a real good one. And um, um, she was talking about the transit and all of that, uh, but also, um, like see if we can't get Caltrans to uh, let them put up a sign uh, stating that uh, the campus is there. So that's it's one of the things. It's in the works. Sorry? It's in the works. So you're working on that? Okay, good. So uh, hopefully we, we can uh, uh, get Caltrans to do that and uh, um, that will, it, it's important to, to I think the people of Calaveras County to know that we have something permanent and stationary here as far as secondary post-secondary education, so that, that gives us opportunity. Um, on the uh, 29th, uh, went to uh, the American Legion Christmas dinner. Oh, I forgot that. I knew, I knew you were going to say that. Um, in Valley Springs, um, Supervisor Kearney was there as well, and a real nice dinner. It was uh, pretty informal, uh, food was great. Food was really great, and uh, um, it, it was it was a lot of fun. I had a good time there, and so I got to meet uh, Robert Packinger. Actually, was there. He he just got inducted into uh, the American Legion with his multiple kids. What does he have four or five kids? Four, four kids. <coughs> He's a, he's a seven year veteran of the Air Force too, by the way. Yeah. So uh, he and his wife was there and uh, was there with his kids and. Um, I sat across from his kids. Um, we had fun. They, I threatened to eat their food, and they, they, they guarded it well, so that was good. Um, and then on uh, the 5th was the Valley Springs Christmas Parade. Uh, 41 entries, like Steve was uh, saying, he was the uh, guy with the sign and the, and, the, and the vest on. Stop, go. That was kind of cool. Um, I was judge with uh, Jason Robitel, Chief Robitel, and um, Judge Barrett. Uh, it was it was the, the kids uh, that come through there, man, are just fantastic. The little dancers, you know, uh, I, I really get a kick out of that. Um, that night, and I, and I also brought the sound for that. And then that night, uh, it was Kids Country Christmas over here in, in, at the uh, San Andreas Town Hall which I was uh, also <laughs> responsible for the sound there. So Sunday morning, I was wiped out pretty much, and I, I don't think I've recovered really since then. Um, but that was a fun program. That was like old-fashioned uh, family atmosphere, kids doing fun things type program, and, and there was a lot of kids singing, and uh, there was activities for, for kids. You know, it was mostly for kids. And Isn't there a benefit? It, uh, they actually everything that they made there will go to the Butte fire victims. So they're gonna, they're gonna uh, uh, whatever they made, they'll write a check to the uh, Calaveras County um, 
uh, Realtors Association. That's good. And it'll go towards, because they wanted to go towards sheds, and that was uh, what they wanted to do, so. Um, on uh, 12 8, uh, which is tomorrow, I'll be at the GBA Sigma meeting, uh, Groundwater Basin Authority, and um, I'll find out what, what, what that's all about when we get there. And then on 12 9, I'm going to RCRC up in Sacramento. And that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Just wanted to uh, reiterate what I said earlier. So everyone is aware um, the medical marijuana discussion will be agendized for the next board meeting on the 22nd. So um, all people are aware and notice of that, that it is coming back. And we will have that discussion on the 22nd. <coughs> so bring bring cookies. <laughs> Mr. Um, Chair, yeah. may I take 30 seconds? Unfortunately, I... I I failed to realize that I failed to mention I attended the Christmas tree lighting in Avery, the Christmas tree lighting in Dorrington, and the Murphy's Christmas Parade. If I didn't get that in, I'd probably I am watch surprised out. you don't have a white beard. Can I say Santa Claus? I'm sitting by Santa. I feel like Santa Claus, or at least <laughs> one of his reindeer. Yeah. Not Rudolph's on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, we, have to closed session. Yeah, we, have to we have to go into closed session. Public comments. Public comments. I've tried that like <laughs> six times already. <laughs> <coughs> oh, and I, I forgot to attend the Wounded Warriors thing at Irish Warrior. Yeah, I didn't see you there. You yeah. Know. yeah. You know why I didn't see you at the Murphy's Parade? Who's that? Because I was at the North End with the flag. <laughs> oh, were you? Yeah. Well, I was on the float. Oh, that's why I didn't see you.